Brook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Caballos. Hey, we are back, and thank you so much for joining us as we discuss the issues of the week here in St. Louis. And then in a half hour, we'll take your phone calls. Let's meet the panelists around the big green table for this edition, starting with the news director herself of KTRS. She's Wendy Weiss, along with Mr. Bill McClellan, the great columnist from the St. Louis Post Dispatch. You hear him 9 to 11 weeknights on KTRS, and you read him in the Riverfront Times. He's Ray Hartman. And from the Dave Glover Show and 97.1 FM News Talk, the St. Louis American, STLMag.com, and 590, Alvin Reed, with whom we are going to begin this discussion. Because I guess the courts have ruled that the NFL owners' phone records can be turned over to the locals here in St. Louis who are suing the NFL over the, I guess, the movement of the Rams from St. Louis to Los Angeles. Is this a game changer, Alvin Reed? Uh, no, I don't think so. And, and I want to differentiate. There's two stories breaking today. One came out of ESPN where some one of their NFL insiders seems to have gotten a transcript of a conversation between Kroenke and Commissioner Roger Goodell. So I don't want the good people of St. Louis to think that by getting these phone records, you're going to have transcripts of all these conversations because those two things aren't going together. I still think we're going to be on the losing end of this, but with all this falling St. Louis's way, rather than, like I say, throw good money after bad and continue that, how about we try to make an end run and get something, i.e. maybe the San Diego Chargers, maybe a future promise for a team, something like that. Because at the end of the day, all you get is we embarrass Stan Kroenke. Well, what have you really got? Because his team is out there and they're going to be playing in this palace and we're left behind. So, I mean, good we made them look hmm. bad but that there's no substance to that well I'm, I'm willing to admit that i was wrong you know initially and and all along i've been against this lawsuit and we're throwing good money after bad and it's a silly thing to do but the way things are going and if, you know we have these home court advantage with the missouri supreme court today and jim bennett that bennett and dowd's are a fine lawyer so I think I've been wrong. I think well, we ought to just play it out. You just and I, I You am, left me by myself. I did. I, well, <laughs> and I am, I am also willing to admit that Bill was wrong. Uh, but, but, <laughs> no, actually, I was there with him. So I, I, I actually thought it was ridiculous, and it does look like, from a standpoint of actually getting something, I would respectfully disagree that there's any prospect whatsoever of us getting an NFL team. I'm not even sure we could support one, frankly, with the corporate pie that we have. And I think the Blues and the Cardinals and, and the new stalker team would, while they would never say it, uh, would have a, it would not be, it wouldn't even be wise. Don't forget the but XFL. We also don't, we, we don't also forget don't, the XFL. Well, well, yeah, right. But we actually don't have a facility to play in at, at NFL quality standards now. And it's just not going to happen. But I'm, I'm, I have to say, we're playing on home. We talk about home field advantage with this, this lawsuit. lawsuit. But this is I, how, I, I, I hope we get what way, we can. This is the way, help me, football aficionados. This is the way they settled a previous lawsuit, correct? In terms of Baltimore getting correct. a team. Yes. Okay, so if they, you know, the, 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 that was an expansion team. So I'm Ball not. It, Christmas is coming. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yes. so Baltimore, yeah. maybe, well, Baltimore did not have the singularly bad history with the NFL. We have now sued him, I think, three times. With Bill Bidwell. And no other city had ever, between Bill Bidwell, Bidwell we, sued him, we sued him after Bidwell, which was a big problem for him, which is why they voted 24 oh, to hang four on a second. against moving you mean, the Rams you mean here. Cleveland? What did Cleveland sue or did Baltimore sue? Because Baltimore was when Art Modell moved yeah, his moved team to team. Baltimore. It and wasn't Cle the result of a lawsuit. No, no, no. Okay. Cleveland. Cleveland. Yes, Cleveland. Yes, right. After that, okay, right. Yeah, right. Cleveland. So right. Cleveland. Had Cleveland. lined up to sue. And they and had them. In the NFL. Well, I, I think it's, it's fair to say, Elvin, you don't believe we're going to get an NFL team. Even if the San Diego Chargers are not happy with Los Angeles, you don't see that, do you really? I, I, that could happen. I think anything, anything, no, anything could happen. No, I'm not saying it's going to happen next year, but anything could happen. And the one thing that St. Louis has created is an argument 
two, well, what are you going to do, NFL? Because, right, we keep winning these cases. That's right. Now, ultimately, I think you're going to lose at the Supreme Court. We're level. not winning cases. But but no, no, but we're, but, yeah. Just rulings. Yes. rulings. Do you know, there's a difference. Do you know and, and ultimately, I think we would, I, we would lose at the United you know, States Supreme Court because but, turning but, over phone records. But do you, I don't you know what it would be like to depose an NFL owner? Do you have any idea? I don't think it's ever going to happen. How many? Well, it, I mean, their, their hands could be forced, right? <laughs> well, hang on a second. We'd have to build a $1.2 billion that's stadium. Where that's going to come from? Here's the problem. I would, I would love to see, Santa. as a football fan, I'd love to have a team, sure. But there is right. no possibility that, that Mr. Spanos, who's not all no. that well to do relative to the rest of these guys, could afford to build a stadium. And if you're okay. talking about us giving Good point, public funny money, let's move forget on. it. Let's talk about parties. Uh, Sergeant Keith Wildhaber of the St. Louis County Police Department successfully sued after he was passed over for promotion 23 times. <laughs> Perhaps because he was gay, at least that's what the jury found, he got $20 million. A big judgment from a jury in St. Louis County. Turns out that the mayor of St. Louis, <coughs> Lida Cruson, Wendy, went to his victory party. And in a Jeremy Kohler piece in Sunday's Post-Dispatch, it was suggested that this was the impolitic thing to do. If she's trying to be better together and extend an olive branch and work together with Sam Page of the St. Louis County Council, she should not be... <laughs> at a party celebrating a $20 million judgment against the county. I have a different take. I'm not looking at it through the political spectrum so much. And obviously, she is Jacob Long's boss. He is her new spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could conceive of a scenario in which Jacob Long in a moment of unbridled exuberance over the outcome and working for Mayor Krusen in the first place, his job is to protect her from just this kind of reaction, which I think is overblown anyway. But maybe he thought, you know, on his own Twitter feed that it wouldn't have that that it wouldn't land as harshly and as hard as it did on Mayor Krusen when it came to, you know, what kind of relationship must she have with the county. Point of order, because she tweeted, a photo of her was tweeted there, right? Because she was tweeted with Sergeant Wildhaber uh. and that she was clearly part of the celebration. Um, she is, she can, it could easily have happened where she goes in, she shakes hands, the optics are great, she's seen by the people she needs to be seen by. I just think this could have been, and, and he's new, and maybe I'm reading this all wrong, and oh, Lida Cruson said, no, you're, Jacob, you're go saying, ahead. And, you're saying he's at fault, not the mayor. I'm saying it could have just been a, I'm a new guy on the job, and I don't realize that these types of reactions are even possible, and I, well, your job you is know, to protect I, I, the mayor. I, I, don't, I don't know the young man, but I, I, I don't see that happening, and I, and I don't think that it hurts Lyda Cruson at, at I all. I don't either. And, and besides, the, I don't know why Sam Page would be mad. I, I'm surprised he wasn't at the party. He was the guy talking about how we will not use the only defense well, the state well, lives. Right. Moore, who he was worked on the side for Sam side. Page, was there, correct? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if Doug well, was, was there or not. He was, he was. So why would it... Well, well, he was, I, I got to tell you, I well, think... Well, because he's not responsible for the Board of Freeholders and Doug Moore. Well, I, first of all, Keith Wildhaber is a very sympathetic figure to a lot of people, a lot of people. in St. Louis, and he should be. He didn't do anything to St. Louis County. The St. Louis County police did stuff to him. And so, I mean, whatever you think of the verdict, um, I think it's a good opportunity for her. And I don't think it was bad politics, and I certainly don't think, as a County resident that it was a poke in the eye to St. Louis County. It I mean, perpetuates I, the I, narrative. Mm, that it absolutely oh, was. I, don't, I mean, her advisors. I don't think so. Oh, absolutely. Her advisors. I think it was. Uh, it, I, I guess they can't make her go places, but her advisors said, like, no, you need to go to that because all this bitter together and all that under fell apart, and the county, everybody's looking like the county this and the county that. Let's poke a little stick in their eye right now like what just what's your favorite saying what when best to kick a man when, well, if you when can't he's kick down. a man when he's down yeah, when like, kick so right. oh yeah this was done purposely and oh. because you no, think yeah because nobody's voting for her from the county and if she should decide to run okay mm. this is a contingency that she wants to get as many votes as she can from and that would be a split let's say if the shadow mayor you know mm. won uh, or ran against her 
to if. Sean Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, so this was, oh, this was strategic well, in every way, shape, I, or form. I, I, I think, think, you know, the right. mayor kind of showed up at a celebration uh, where a gay man who was discriminated against was victorious, so she celebrated that. But I think maybe Wendy's right that she shouldn't have kind of tweeted it to make it look like she was dancing on somebody's grave. But well, I'm not sure if it was it was on Jacob Long's oh, Twitter okay. feed. Yeah. I'm Real not quick, sure if okay. it was on St. hers. St. Louis police are getting sued nine ways to Sunday. Well, right. Now, is she going to show up? For these people, uh, when they get awarded, that's their exactly money. Right. Good point. That's hey, exactly Bill, right. I don't good, think this good point, right. Alvin. Hey, Bill, I want to ask you about a story that uh, we, we followed a little bit. Uh, Governor Parson and the General Assembly gave $50 million in tax incentives to General Motors to expand the Wentzville plant by $1.5 billion. That's one of the biggest expansions in Missouri history, for sure. But now, as the result of the UAW agreement, General Motors has agreed with the union to maintain 2,000 jobs there, which is all fine and good, except there are 4,300 jobs there now. So we're subsidizing the building of robots that are going to eliminate some jobs. What do you think about this? I think it's a wise thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the only defense you can make for this is if, if everybody else is throwing money at corporations, then the thing is, okay, we'll do it too. So if other people aren't putting conditions on it, why would we? Because they would say, well, wait a minute, you want to make us do this? No. So it, well, it's a bad uh, system, but we're, we're in it. And, and who knows, maybe if, if we hadn't given them 50 million, maybe they'd have cut all the jobs. Hmm. It, it's it's kind a of, great thing we've done. It's what's so stunning about it is that Governor Parson is running against Nicole Galloway, right? I mean, and she is the what state auditor. So he has handed her already on a silver platter. You know the fact that he was in favor of personally, this. yeah, was going personally, around the state. Personally, oh. sold this, and she, you know. She is. She's going to have. She's going to have a ball with this kind of thing. If you don't attach any penalties, you know, if there are no consequences for General <coughs> Motors, if we're just here, take our money. I mean, that's going to well, be Bill, something Bill, she's going to use in her campaign. I think Bill's partly right. That that Thank if you. you partly. Thank you. <laughs> partly. No. That that if I if in fact this is standard operating procedure for states that they say hey, here's 50 million bucks and, and and a republican conservative out there in that area wanted to put some stipulations that had 90 or 95 percent of the jobs would still be there if it's standard operating procedure for a state not to protect itself then you'd be right i have a hard time imagining it is it seems like something that was singularly foolish on the part of the state of Missouri that we had no protections for what for that 50 million bucks. Now right. again, I, I, I the general principle, none of us like giving money away like this. And and you're right to the extent that if it meant that they were gonna go to another state, it's the same old same. The reason role. I think I agree with you about I think we may have missed something here was how fast it happened. I mean yeah. the governor just signed that bill during the last legislature sure. session. So it's it's not like even six, what, six months haven't even right. gone by, and they're already saying, like, hey, you know, all that stuff about, stuff about yeah, keeping everybody those plugged jobs. in. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in right. 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 You know what? The uh, bargaining agreement. I guess we give. No, that's true. They <laughs> got yeah. the. You know, that's why I don't think Nicole Galloway is going to be able to oppose it. I mean, otherwise, she's going to have the UAW, because UAW is going to at least want those 2,000 jobs here. So I, I got to believe that they're in favor of the subsidy. Oh, no. You. I, I, no, I, no, I, no, she can just criticize. He sold you out. Right. Well, well, union. Her, her issue is yeah. just what I said is because like, I don't you, know. you gave them this $50 million lost, dollar gift yeah. on the honor system, you know, without protecting well, the jobs. Trust me, they knew. They knew when they crafted this that they should have had a clawback provision. Correct. And it and was purposely not say. put in there. And why? Well, you know what? She's going to, what Parsons is going to say is exactly what Bill said. If we didn't make this deal, they would have moved to Flint or to well, he, Jackson, Mississippi. You never tell us, but I'm not so sure other states well, are that careless. Well, no, but, but, but if that was the deal, then you should have said it in the first place. That's all you need right. to Hey, huh. we're going to tell you the truth. Okay. We might lose jobs, but we're going to keep the plan. Yeah. Ray, I want to ask you about the Board of Freeholders in the city of St. Louis. And Mayor Lida Krusen recently revised her list of nine nominees. And she got some flack because she had only one person north of Del Mar. And so now the, I believe the, the new list has three or four living north of Del Mar, but her list is now being criticized because it does not include anyone who's Bosnian, 
Latino, Asian, or LGBT? Did she err once again? Well, like I said, my bias from the beginning was it should be younger people because this is planning the future. I don't understand why we always go to the usual suspects. So that's my first reaction. I mean, you can't do Noah's Ark. You know, I get that. Um, it seems to me, first of all, these are people that are giving up their time. They're not getting paid. Not the issue. Well, no, no, but I'm it's just saying. It's not the issue. The issue is the diversity no, of the I, I'm just freeholders. saying, let me finish. I'm saying that, that because these are people, this is this shouldn't have been that hard, I guess, is, is my point, is to sit down. This is one of the times where you sit down in advance with your other the other side of the alderman and, and work this out. It, now it's being like this tortured process, and I don't blame any one particular community for speaking a stick. Well, what is that? And, and this, no, wait, but, I mean, it should have been a lot right, easier. Well, in the county, they put out who wants to be on it. Yeah. And they picked from a long list of people that wanted to be on the, you know, right. mm -hmm. this committee. As opposed, it sounds like this was all in the mayor's hands and then room 200. Right. And once exactly. again, the advisors and all that. So they got bad advice, just like they did when they had all the white people down there cutting the ribbon at the arch. <laughs> all right, and then, when did that happen? He said, oh my yeah. God, we got to go back. We messed we up. Take another okay. picture. But now <laughs> right. that, you know, round two, okay. come on, Mr. Mayor well, or, or okay, Mrs. But, Mayor, you right. now you but say enough is okay. enough. But These here's are the, the people. Here's the thing. Okay. okay, this whole nationality. Mm -hmm. Somebody from the Amazon rainforest is going to be slighted, and they too are going to be angry. Mm, I think no, truly, I, you can't go by nationality. You can't say that that be, because you don't have uh, Bosnian representation. Okay, uh, that, but well, with the LGBTQ let me, let me community, talk, you have to have a representative from that community. Let's face it. And um, what is her name? She was already on it. Yeah. But, and they but now, and they, okay. and now they've taken okay. her off. Side issue right. for your perusal. What about Sam Moore, a member of the Board of Aldermen, who said, why should there be an Asian from North St. Louis on the committee? Because someone had suggested that. He said, and this is uh, close to a quote, the only Asians in North St. Louis are those who are selling rice in chop suey restaurants. Right. What did you make of that, Alvin Reed? I thought that was horrific. I think, you know, I'm, I don't necessarily tell people they have to resign, but, um, you know, the Board of Aldermen needs to take some action on that. And I think if he could be replaced on that committee, I think that is called for that. And I'll just say, if, if one of the white aldermen said, oh. I'm not worried about having a black representative from oh. Holly Hills because the only black people we see mm -hmm. work at the fried chicken place and then they leave at the uh -huh. end of the day, uh -huh. you know, the city would be at a standstill. Well, you know what? Right. The, the, <laughs> or, or, or that, that would be inaccurate, but frankly, no. there are very few, if any, Asians living north of Del Mar. And you go up Grand, and there are one chop suey, and they call them chop suey. They don't call them I, Asians. I don't call them. That doesn't, make, that yeah. doesn't keep still, it from being a trope. So you're perpetuating it's such a stereotype. It's you horrible. can't say, oh, well, but the yeah, there's an accurate. What? It's horrible. What if it's accurate in well, this particular case? Well, 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 sometimes you have to give somebody a little Come bit on. of a break. And, and, I, and I think that I don't think Sam Moore meant to be disrespectful to Asians at all. Well, he was. saying that there aren't any Asians on the north side. That's true. Now, no, one I, thing that he did say that I think we run from in St. Louis, and I think it's kind of part of our problem, but he did state this correctly because I've lived all over the country and moved back. Our issues are black and white in the city of St. Louis. Right. We just don't have large enough other minority populations. The, our, St. Louis is back and forth is between black and white. I will white. say this. So, I, but I'm not Bosnian. I'm that that's that's Bosnian. Latino. But, I understand. But, I think but not to the number community. of other cities. Our issues... Go down to the Board of Aldermen. You got black people, you got white people. Right. Do you Go have right enough? Right do we, are we going to have enough Lithuanian? Are we going to have I, enough I, Irish no, I representation? I mean, it's just. Hold no. on a minute. I, I think that there's 300,000 yeah. people in the city. I don't know how many Bosnians there are, but I think it might be more than one ninth, okay? And, and the point being, not that I'm saying you have to do it, but I don't blame a community that is, that is not, that wants to speak up. They say, hey, what about us? Because let me tell you something. If they left the South I, Side, I don't out think here, it was the Bosnian community. No, I'm not saying they did. Up. But no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. So many, Someone yeah. said speaking on behalf Talking. of them. But my point is, you can make an ar any I, argument you want. And, and at I, the end of the day, I think it should be younger people and it should be as diverse as you can I make it. I apologize. Do okay, to don't forget, there's also there's, there's other groups too, I, like the disabled. Is you there, can't, you can't, I understand you can't hit well, okay. everybody have. On that subject, Alvin Reed, what did you make of a story that was first in the LA Times, then Seattle? covered I think actually before we did and that is that in Missouri 
Some people purporting to be Cherokee are getting jobs. In fact, a couple years ago when the mayor of St. Louis announced the demolition, a $300,000 uh, $300, demolition contract, he said, hey, it's being done by minorities. Well, the LA Times looked into it, and the minority was some guy who purported to be a Cherokee, but he had no relatives of Cherokee ancestry, and he actually claimed to be part of a tribe that is not recognized by other Cherokee tribes. So now people think the fraudometer is going off. Let me ask you this. If 0.28% of the city of St. Louis is Native American, much less Cherokee, should there be contracts set aside for people who claim Cherokee heritage at all? Well, if you actually qualify, and these people did not. I mean, so they're, they're even just liars, okay? And there should be a penalty on, on top of just not getting any more contracts. I think that should be called to task, because that's fraud, okay? But yes, you have to include, because just because they're not here, I might move here. I mean, if I was, if I grew up and I was Native American, I mean, a Native American person, and I grew up in a borough of New York, had never lived any place else, I'm a New Yorker, okay, but I should still be able to qualify for, like, a uh, MBE contract, even if the population of Manhattan is 0 0.01 well, Native American. Right. I still I, I, I would say in St. Louis, though, if someone is moving here to get a contract from the city of St. Louis because he's Cherokee, that's probably someone who's taken the contract away from an African-American certified minority business enterprise owner. Mr. Tally, the minority program set-asides are for minorities, and whether they're Latinos, whether they're Native Americans or whether they're blacks, they qualify. I mean, the, the, what we have to worry about is the fraud, like this guy right, claiming right. to be a Native American, or, or the businessmen who turn the business over to their wife Thank so you. they can right. be yeah. women, women, minority women owned. owned. Yeah. Those are the people we want to go Absolutely. after. Absolutely. Not and legitimate you know, minorities. I just attended a thing at the garden this past weekend about what we did on our soil to the Osage, okay? And so to me. Was that in Missouri? In Missouri, yes. The Osage and the Cherokee, to me, legitimately. Absolutely, they should qualify for it, but obviously not fraudulently. And and so there's, and it really demeans. There's ongoing uh, groups and 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 folks celebrating and remembering mm. and protecting the Cherokee and the Osage, you know, his traditions. Were the Cherokee history. here too? Yeah, there were, there were trail of tears. Yeah, walking and, through. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. No, 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 the Osage. But I mean, no, the Osage I'm not making here. a joke about that, but that's no, they the came Osage. through here. Yeah. But could you yeah. see having to have a cheek swab? I mean, to prove that you were something. I mean, you don't necessarily yeah. have to take it to that level, right. but at the same time, if you were claiming to be a Native American, I would look into that seriously because I think what these newspapers did was bust something that's been going on for a long time sure. all over America. Right. And the first thing St. Louis should have done is say, mm. I'm sorry, throw these people off the job. Oh, and I'll give the mayor's office and down there a little bit of credit going off on them all the time. They didn't go into it, but they did this four months after uh, might have been even a little okay. bit. So it's just coming out now, but they had already taken care of the problem. Okay, final topic. I think it's going to be the final topic. Ray, I want to ask you about the Attorney General, uh, Eric Schmidt, weighed mm -hmm. in this week on some crime and punishment issues in the mm -hmm. city of St. Louis, number one. He, I think, is supported by the uh, police chief, John yes, Hayden, in uh, supporting a residency requirement now for the city of St. Louis actually abolishing, abolishing the residency right. requirement so the police officers do not have to live in the city of St. Louis. All right, that's that. And then he'd like to increase the penalties for carjackings, uh, which we have about one a day almost now in the city of St. Louis, from 10 years to life. What do you think about that? I don't, first of all, on the first point, I agree with him and with the chief, as, but I don't think that decision, I still think it's up to the city and not anybody outside like the state to impose that. I, I do agree with abolishing the residency requirement have for a long time, but I think it should be made by the city. And, and I don't have any problem with weighing in on it. As attorney general, he has every right to do that. Um, as far as the second point, um, and he made a big point out how we're not going to do anything about guns, which I always think is a ridiculous thing to say. Um, you know, as long as it's not mandatory minimums in the three strikes and you're out kind of mode, I don't have a problem. But if you're tying hands of judges, 
which I wasn't quite clear if they were, then I'd be against it. If, as far as increasing the penalty, it's a big problem in a city, and particularly if it's if it's armed. I don't I mean I don't care what they make the maximum as long as judges are, don't have their hands tied. And as long as Kim Gardner prosecuted, I mean. Well, yeah, well, I think she would have no choice I uh, because I think if they look, if you commit the crime, you get caught. They've got to prosecute the person. If you face it ten she years, she has a funny get, way of deciding what she well, I mean, doesn't. Look, she you know, doesn't. Put a gun on, on my head and take my car. I think that's pretty. But no, don't forget. I mean, when they they got the guy who shot someone at Ballpark Village, and he admitted to the crime, and she didn't prosecute him. What was no witnesses, or what was up? I, don't know. I forgot. Yeah, there was. Well, but, now, Ray, you got a good point, though, on. real quick. Um, you know, Jamila and Nasheed wanted you committed a crime with a gun in the city of St. Louis, and right. you get ten years, and everybody bristled at that, like, yep. oh, the poor mm -hmm. this and the poor that. But now you brandish that same gun and carjack somebody, and oh yeah, you're looking at ten years. What's the difference? I say, hey, you commit a gun a crime with a gun you should be looking at minimum six seven years i mean that's Is, you, this stuff's got to stop and and I'm, you got to start somewhere and i don't think i mean i don't want there's no evidence that kim gardner's unwilling to prosecute well that one case i brought up yeah. okay well that there was i think in well, that I, one, I, I, evidence i'm just suggesting i don't have a lot of well, that's fine. Confidence or faith in the circuit attorney's office. That's days. fair. I mean, mm -hmm. but I, I don't agree. And, and any prosecutor has and, discretion. And, well, and there, I yeah. think in well, that it, case there were evidence problems on it, but I'm not sure. There's I don't no know, doubt. It was a mistake. The higher the mandatory sentence, the more reluctant the judges and prosecutors will be going after the gray area cases. It's not well, the role of legislators yeah. right. to tie right. judges' hands. Hey, we have to uh, go to the old mailbag and see what people had to say about the program last week. Starting with J.B. Burns. Instead of stranding people in the hypertubes, consider a bullet train St. Louis to Kansas City. And it can haul freight. As a mechanical engineer that loves innovation, I fear getting stuck in a tube if there is a traffic jam or stall. Thank you, J.B. Burns of St. Louis. They should connect the Hyperloop to the Del Mar trolley, then extend the trolley down to the new Ferris wheel downtown can't think of a better way to spend the taxpayers' money. That from Bob Wilson of St. Louis, Missouri. You can always write us care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Love to get those emails, letters at KETC.org. And don't forget those tweets, hashtag DonnybrookSTL. And you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast. That would be Apple, Spotify, Google Play, or TuneIn. Ironically, on Thanksgiving, which celebrates turkeys, we will not be with you. So, but we will be back in two weeks. Uh, so, have a great Thanksgiving. We wish you the best with you and your family. But don't touch that dial because in just a moment, we've got your turn. Ray Hartman and Alvin Reed will be taking your phone calls and reading your tweets. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Go Blues. Happy Thanksgiving. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. people that have already started cooking for next Thursday, Thanksgiving. We won't be here, but enjoy that dinner because I'm going to enjoy mine. Ray Hartman, Alvin Reed, on your turn. Let's start with Dave in Defiance. Hi, Dave. Gentlemen, good evening. Good Thanks evening. For taking my call. Thanks for taking my call. And I'd like to make a comment or so about the, the gay man who was passed up 23 times and got a $23 million settlement. Mm -hmm. $20 million. Okay. Uh, my question is, is, of those 23 times, was he the most qualified for that position? Isn't it a possibility that sometimes of those 23 times passed over that somebody could have been more qualified for that job? I think that um, they added it up in particular probably and probably didn't count the times because I'm sure he was up for promotion when he had been an officer for like two or three years. And But at, after a time, 
there comes a time where there's just there's no way of explaining it and he, and he was uh, a very good officer he started his career pulling out saving somebody's life pulling him out of a rather heroically pulling him out of a burning car a couple of years later he got he got a, a medal of valor for that he got um another word for saving another woman with a Heimlich maneuver and the jury obviously felt he was deserving of the verdict you know my guess is I think we all agree it will it will end up at a number smaller than that but he was uh, he is I guess is he still I proved his case he was right? a good he was he won his case and he was really a great cop yeah thank you Dave thanks for the call though let's go to Carrie from Dogtown hi Carrie hi um I wanted to talk with you about the freeholders um, and the inter, um, oh, I'm forgetting the title of the committee, the legislative committee. Um, no, we don't. Okay, that's we, fine. we don't show up. Intergovernmental Affairs or whatever it was called. Okay, well, yeah. I'm forgetting the title and that's I shouldn't, yeah. but, but okay. that Sam Moore is the chair uh -huh. and Sharon Ty is is the assistant chair. These are two well-seasoned alder people um, who have my respect um, and admiration because they do their homework. And Alan, particularly, your comment about Sam being removed from that board um, Sam is the alder of the fourth ward, which is the poorest part of St. Louis City. Um, when I heard, and actually I saw it on social media, um, his comment about chop suey, I didn't see it as a slur. I saw it as him stating a fact. Um, there are a lot of those types of eating establishments on the north side and they're very popular and um he's telling the truth okay um and that may be so carrie but and, if a white alderman said the only black people i see work at the fried chicken place and then leave the neighborhood i would be insulted okay so i think sam needs to realize that that, that comment was insulting i'm i'm sorry i i know how you might feel about it but I would be insulted if the shoe was on the other foot. Okay. And, and you certainly have your right to your sensitivities. He was stating the fact that Asians don't live on the north side. Now, as for the Bosnians, mm -hmm. I can recall a few years ago that they were in the 22nd Ward. And rightly so having come over here, having experienced war firsthand in their own front yards, um, complained about the gunfire and about roaches and so on. And, and I felt a great deal of empathy for them in terms of the housing. Um, Bosnians are pretty prevalent on the south side of town. I think what what we are looking at with the freeholders is trying to be inclusive. And I understand the Board of Aldermen, um, particularly the people on this committee, protesting that the north side of town was not being represented. And we don't, we don't we, disagree with well, you. I agreed with you completely about that. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks for the call, though. And I, I, I agree that that remark was tasteless. Um, I don't know. You know right, that's this all you period, can say. I, you know, yeah. and, and I think that, you know, yeah. I have no, I think we all agree that, that the idea of having underrepresented the North, the true North Side. Was a mistake. Was, and, and frankly, it would never happen to the South Side. And if, if it done, yeah. I think we'd feel the same way about that. Absolutely. So, I mean, but it's over, you know, I hope they move forward. As I say, my, my vote was for younger people to be uh, more prevalent and I, I didn't really pay attention to the age of the, the mm -hmm. most recent ones But uh, we appreciate the call Carrie. Who's appreciate next? It. That'd be Ron in Jefferson County. Hi, Ron Ron turn your TV down. Hello. Wait a minute. Turn your TV down. Yeah. All right. I just turned it off. Okay, oh, yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> We'd have to turn it off well, but that's but, all right. uh, well, I mean I just turned the volume off. Okay uh, where you uh made the comment about you were talking about carjacking and uh, mm -hmm. six or seven years mm -hmm. uh you know 
if it's committed with a gun, they need 25 years to life. Well, well they're talking no about exceptions. 10. They're talking about 10, and I could live with 10, okay? I just said 6, 7 in that if there were a, if you wanted to set a mandatory sentence that was less than 10, I would say 6 or 7, but 10 is fine with me. I don't, I don't think you're going to curve it at that because they're not as scared of that. But 25 years before parole, they'd be scared of that. Well, there's only, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but you could murder somebody and get less than 25 years. So you can't say, I, I understand now, you're probably going to say that, well, if you murder somebody, you should get 75 years to life. Right. But right now, the way it's set up, you would be sentencing people for a longer period of time for carjacking someone than you would for killing someone. So thus, that's why only with a gun. Only, carjack, only carjacking with a gun. Well, if I shoot somebody with a gun, I would probably get less than 25 years. So you can't sentence to somebody for yeah. that if they would get less for killing somebody. Well, well the, the thing is, if uh, with the killing somebody, that ought to be a mandatory death sentence. Well, all right. I hear you, man. Right. Okay, all thank you. Right. Thanks. So, so anyway, I, you know, my own view is that uh, we got to trust the judicial system to, de to, mm -hmm. to decide penalties. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think anybody is opposed to, as you know, making people pay for carjacking. You know, the example is if there's two or three people and there's one ringleader and, one, you know, it just, there's all kinds of variables involved in, in, in sentencing. I don't think anybody's for, for, you know, doing anything but cracking down on it. Um, but I think you got to trust the judges and the jury and the, the criminal justice system as far as sentencing goes. Uh, we've had such disasters with the three strikes and you're out type stuff. Let's go to Carla from Ferguson. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. Um, I, hey, no problem. I, uh, you know, I do want to speak to the carjacking. Fortunately, I've never suffered one, but right. as we all know, it's all about the technology, right? So sooner or later, I'm going to have to buy a new car, and I'm going to get stuck with that technology that makes me vulnerable. Right. And this, you know, once a day, that's that's quite significant. So we have to do something. I don't know if more time is the answer because we know that. That doesn't really deter crime, but there is a lot of like one-on-one -on -one crime right now, just in general, and that's got to stop. And I don't know if the courts is going to is how we get there. I think we have to think out of the box and maybe put out public service announcements and you know, hey, if you do this, you can take your life. You know, do you really want that car that bad? Is it that important for that joyride? Something like that. I, I agree. Know. I agree with you 100. percent Thank you. We got some tweets, Ray. First one is from Emory Cox 4. Why did the union agree to the potential elimination of GM jobs? Is there more to this story? Interesting question. We did have questions. Craig Ray Riggins, the Spanish pavilion, the replica of the Santa Maria, the Admiral, and St. Louis Center will all return before there is another NFL team in St. Louis. <laughs> SCL won't get the chance to lose a third team. I think Craig is correct. Let's go to Ken, uh, Kensky 5. Minimum 25 years for any gun crime, 50 years for armed carjacking. All right. Oh, Thank you, dramatic, Kensky 5. <laughs> and uh, send your tweets to hashtag DonnybrookSTL. They're much appreciated. And let's go to Lori from St. Louis. Hi, Lori. Hi. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, hey, I just wanted to make a comment on Alvin's comment about the uh, Asian remark that was made. Mm -hmm. I agree with him 100%. And um, honestly, Alvin, if you lived in the city, I'd vote for you for mayor. I think you make a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. Oh, you think you're in <laughs> trouble now? How's he going to be mayor of Kirkwood uh. and St. Louis at the same time? <laughs> well, I, I could be. Know, that's good. Unless we get better together. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. I'd be the super mayor. I'm trying to right. get, be his campaign manager no, in I Kirkwood. I appreciate the sentiment, Thanks, Laurie, Lord. but I have no aspiration, and it would only... Make things worse, probably. Thank you. But thank you. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to Jessica in St. Louis. Hi, Jessica. Hi. 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 I am glad to get on, and this is a great show. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, I, might have, I might have my topics mixed up, but um, I was concerned about the, the lack of representation with the uh, landholders mm -hmm. for uh, people in North St. Louis City. As versus uh, the 
the the city residency rule. Okay. You know, my husband's a city fireman. We lived in North St. Louis 44 years. We love it. On the other hand, uh, one of the things that uh, stands out is lack of rep representation on some of the major events that happen here in the city. Uh, some of the major uh, players or or things that we're looking at on the news, we don't see ourselves always in that picture. And so um, I'm just thinking that uh, with small representation from North City, uh, then to perhaps say to get a good job, a so-called good job, you have to live within the city, then it's almost telling uh, an employee that even though um, we'll give you a job, we're not going to give you the same benefits of other people in the region. Okay. Maybe I have that wrong. No, well, I, they're, okay. they're, Thank you. But no, you're all right. And I'm just going to say that, I'm just going to ask, like, if firefighters, police, it looks like it's coming, didn't have to live in the city, I'm waiting to see what percentage of people will move. Because that's the question that we really don't know. I think it would be uh, substantial. I don't mean half or anything, yeah. but I, I, but I just think yeah. a number of people I, will move. I've always thought the best answer was to to re remove the residency requirement, but give an incentive, a bonus, some other right, uh, pos some other incentive on a positive basis to those who live in the city. All right. And you know, would you effectively have a two tiered system, or at least some reason? Again, it could be an annual bonus, whatever it would be that would incentivize people to live in the city rather than make them live in the city. Because, you know, what you've got in the city structurally is a city that used to have 850,000 people that now has 300. And so some of the parameters, some of the rules have to change with time. But I, I you know, and the firefighters and the police in the city, no matter what you, we get in the controversy, do amazing work. They're Absolutely. all the first responders, and uh, we should appreciate them. And I think we should make it as easy as possible right. for people and to we serve both, in those we, jobs. We both think there shouldn't be a residency. Right? I, I don't think there should I, be. I don't think there should but be. But if anything, there should be an incentive for people who stay. Uh, let's go to Jessica from St. Louis. There I think that, oh, was, that was Jessica. I'm sorry. Um, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> from Manchester. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, hi. This is... Yeah, hi. Hi, guys. This hi. is Kevin from Manchester. Um, I'd like to understand how you guys feel about the $20 million reward to the police officer that, you know, claims that he was bypassed for certain uh, promotions. Mm -hmm. That happens in private industry probably, oh, my God, you know, millions of times. But why, as a county resident, am I then have to bear some of that penalty payment, honestly, and then number two, that could be spent on police salaries or better police technology or better police training, et cetera, et cetera. It just doesn't, I can't, I can't make it work in my mind. What do you guys think? Well, well I would say this, Kevin, if you go and look, I'm, I'm sure the city of Manchester has been sued. Somebody slipped on ice or somebody fell or something happened and they got sued and either settled or lost in court. And you are a taxpayer in Manchester and that falls upon you because it comes either from insurance fund or some fund where it's your money so it's no different it was a public entity the st louis county police department it was not a private business it is is, is a is a public entity that got sued and lost and when public entities get sued and lost like i said st louis city's got like probably how countless lawsuits uh filed against it and every time they lose that's what the residents of st louis are paying that bill so you know that's that's the explanation a public entity was judged to do wrong, not by you, I, but a jury of our peers, and that's why the county has to pay. Hey, hey, Kevin, let me add something. Um, first of all, it's not going to be $20 million, okay? It, under state so-called tort reform laws that were passed some time ago, the $17 million of that was uh, uh, punitive damages, and by law, half of that goes to a state fund. Right. And very few times... Do the lawyers let it get to that point? Because eight and a half million dollars, that's that's the beginning point when the lawyers talk about a settlement, because nobody's getting that, okay? So and and generally speaking, not many cases go to that point. So it's gonna be far less than twenty million dollars. And then there's gonna be some insurance that covers it as well. Um, it was the jury. I mean, I, I don't think there's any question, and I happen to agree with the jury, 
that Mr. Wildhaber was discriminated against uh, rather maliciously by the police department. That's, that was the jury verdict. That's our system. But it will be a lot less than, than that. And my guess, I, if I had a guess, I'm, I'm thinking they'll settle for a few million dollars. We'll have to see. Yeah. But I would think it'll be a lot less than right. that. And one more thought, Kevin. You're going to be mad at somebody. Be mad at the county itself because they could have settled this for $850,000. Right. And, the county and they chose not to. That was a really questionable judgment. Absolutely. Part. But we appreciate right. the call, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Dell in St. Louis County. Hi, Dell. Yes. Hello. Hello. Listen, what I wanted to say is, why don't they, uh, the city and the county, do away with this juvenile court system? Because these kids are going around killing people with guns and carjackings and all that, and they 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 should be uh, treated as adults. Okay. Well, you don't get rid of the adults. juvenile. You don't get rid of the juvenile system. You just right. charge people as adults, and that's what right. goes on now. I mean, juvenile is because right. people do things when they're juvenile that shouldn't stick with them for the rest of their lives. Correct. We ain't talking about carjacking <laughs> and murder and all right. that. But that's why a juvenile system exists. Right. And the kids do it. There are plenty of of um, teenagers who, um, when they commit particularly violent crimes, are in fact uh, treated as adults as as they should be. But there's a whole lot of younger, there's kids as little as young as 11 and 12 and 13 that are in the system for a variety of things and we would, I think we very strongly need, and I think we have very good juvenile, um, in both the city and county, we do have really good juvenile systems. Yeah, right. So, and also, if you, uh, you know, participate in a very violent crime, you're 15 years old, you're transferred to an adult. It right. isn't like you're, when you turn 18, they just turn you back out on the street. But you'd be amazed at how young some of the, uh, Perpetrators yeah, are exactly. in, in, so this it's a uh, it's an interesting question. We do appreciate the call. Thank you. How are you, Robert from Bridgeton? Hi, Robert. What's on your mind? Good evening. Yeah, as far as North St. Lucia is concerned, mm -hmm. I think it's time for a, a portable home system. Uh, if you go visit a lot of uh, major uh, cities, you'll see uh, mobile home complexes, major mobile home complexes. And I think St. Louis, uh, North St. Louis is prime for that. Okay, Robert, just on point, you think Sam Moore was uh, innocent kind of in what he said, or do you think that was a little out of hand? Uh, well, it was sad to say it's true, but it is off color. Okay, all right. Well, okay. thank you. I appreciate uh -huh. it. All right. Jeffrey, back to Jefferson County. Hi, how you doing? Jerry, I'm sorry. Jerry, how you doing? <laughs> Oh, doing doing fine. Hey, I'm just curious. Do you, you think the same group of lawyers that uh, drew this agreement up for General Motors to get that money and um, they could just walk away if they want or they only have to keep 2000 you think that's the same ones that drew up the contract for the Rams? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I, I, I was going to let you finish, but I said, I think I know what he's going to say. In, in fairness, we're being, we're pretty, a lot of times on Donnybrook, you know, these issues come up. We obviously aren't lawyers. We haven't read the fine, but we don't know the specifics. The general concept that the result could be a, such a sharp reduction of jobs after they were given 50 million incentives is troubling. But as I said, we really don't know. We don't know. I suspect from in all states it's different. And, you know, Bill had an interesting point. I mean, you got to, if you're going to play the game, you got to play the game. But I, I think that um, it, it sure doesn't look good right now. Let's put it that way. So, absolutely. I, it, it, well, interesting point, Jerry. Right. And, and we didn't get a chance to point this out, too. In the midst of all this, they were on strike. Right. So you have people that were striking that here in the next year might not even have a job. Right. It just it, it's just wild how that worked they out. They probably could argue that that had something to do with the dynamic. Well, probably so, but we should have been right. the state should have been so ready to just give them fifty million dollars yeah, with all that possibly happening. That's a good question. Good point. Let's go to William from South County. Hi, William. Good evening, guys. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, Couple quick points. Uh, I thought maybe uh, Alvin Vermeer. That was an intriguing uh, <laughs> no. uh, revelation by a lady. Maybe you guys could be co-mayors here of St. Louis. You'd really love that. We it's all his. No, I was gonna say nobody ever recommends me for any of this, but that's all good. Um, uh, well, well I would recommend for the caller from Manchester who had the uh, 
questions about the settlement for the police officer. Uh, since you were too uh, modest yourself to tout your uh, writings, Mr. Hartman, okay. that this guy could Google up or uh, file, a, uh, get online with the uh, RFT and read Ray's What Were They Thinking mm -hmm. article okay, well, thank you. concerning that whole matter, and that should clear up a lot All for right. him. Well, thank you. And have a happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate I you too, William. Thank, thank, thank you for right. the kind Back words. Back at you. And he thank is you. right. That was an excellent article that pretty much laid it out like, what were you I, thinking? Re regardless of your thoughts on the officer, lifestyle, all that. That was just a business decision decision that need be made, and they blew that. And I do agree with most of my columns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll who, who's next? Lie. That's David and Afton. Hi, David. Hey, how you doing tonight? Just fine. How about yourself? I'm doing well, thanks. All uh, right. I guess they want to pile on. Um, want to pile on with the uh, uh, about the cop. He is mm -hmm. an exceptional cop. He's still a cop. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Not only was he passed over, instead of them allowing him to live near where he works, they transferred him yeah. you know, 20 miles away. So that's just plain mean. Right. Yes. So if they're having trouble, you know, anybody's having trouble getting their head around um, why <laughs> why the verdict went that way, maybe that might help them out a little bit. Abs absolutely. And you had contradictory testimony on the stand. Uh, was, oh, they, that, they that, just, come on. That, now. <laughs> that, that was rough. It was, uh, and they, they had depositions from the police chief in which he basically yeah. admitted that when they said, I think it was like, you know, because he was suing, is that a problem? It is now kind of thing. You're it was right. like, yeah. I can't believe they took that to trial. I also can't believe we didn't get invited to the victory party. I don't know what happened. Right, that. I didn't know it was happening. I didn't even know about it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Another David in Olivet. Hi, David. Come on, David. You there? All right. Yeah, I'm here. All right, turn your TV down, my man. What's on All your right, mind, David? Down. All right, there we go. Go right ahead. Yes, I, I'd like to ask whether or not... Uh, Donnie Brook or KETC would ever consider inviting uh, Lyda Creason and Sam Page to have a joint press conference. You know, we um, do things that in the political season like debates, but other than that, we really don't do that kind of thing. But uh, they're welcome to call your turn at any particular <laughs> time. But thank you, David. We appreciate the call. Let's go to Louise in Green, Co Green County. Hello? Yes, um, this is Louise from Green County. Uh, I really enjoy your show. Uh, watch it every week. It's, you guys are great. Thank you. But I heard an interesting, yes, I heard an interesting comment on KMOX. I, I'm sure that's the station I was listening to uh, a couple weeks ago that there are 96,000 licensed lawyers in the state of Illinois. And when they asked how many licensed lawyers there were in the state of Missouri, it was 24,000, if I heard it correctly. Okay. Now that... That that should tell you. That should tell you some of the things we've talked about tonight with the different lawsuits and different things. Ninety-six thousand compared to a neighboring state of twenty-four thousand. Well, in fairness, I Illinois got more lot. people. Yeah, right? uh, Illinois but, got like yeah, double our population. I, Louise, I was just wondering if you yeah. were setting us up for a lawyer joke. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no. I just, I just, I found that interesting. I just, I just thought, my God, I mean, that many more. And I realized we've got you know Chicago and much more right. it's population good, right. than that, but. Wow. That's that's a, that's hey, uh, that's Louise, are you in Greenville? No, in Green County. No, I know, but I, is, okay, I, just County, thought, I, thought Green, I thought that's where Greenville was. I, say, I stand corrected. Thank, thank you. you for the call. We appreciate it, hey, Louise. Let, hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. keep up the good work. Oh, really thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. If we were quicker, bye -bye. I think there would be a lawyer joke in there. Yeah, pretty sure. much. A we're good, by, a, as journalists, we're fellow bottom feeders, so who are we to do that? All right, Fraser, Centerville. Hi, Fraser. Hey, how you doing? Just fine. Good. I hey, want to appreciate you guys, uh, expressing appreciation for you guys. Thank you. You do a really good show. Thank you. You're very kind. Got a, couple, got a couple of questions. And just regarding this uh, football incident with the player getting hit in the head with the helmet. Yeah. Uh, why wouldn't he be eligible to be charged with aggravated attempted murder? Well, actually, and possibly, <laughs> yes. 
Well, not, not attempted murder, I don't no, think. No, no, but, but he could be charged with a crime. He could probably have been charged with assault, but in general, that does not yeah. happen at sporting events. I think two events where athletes were charged for something that happened but it's, on uh, ice or on field. Yeah, it would, on a field, it would be very unlikely. Yeah. I, I mean, was, he's, he's getting punished. What else you got? Long. What else you got, Fraser? We got to go. Okay, well, I'm looking at the, the voter situation. Mm -hmm. We seem to be so concerned about the interference of Russia with the... The All right, Fraser, we're going to move on. Thank you, Fraser. Sandra, real quick. We got about 10 seconds. You there? Sandra going once. Sandra going uh, twice. Yeah, I think we're Sandra going three times. We want to wish everybody out there a very, very happy and safe and warm Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. We'll see you in two weeks.